Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into a Williams Electronics Incorporated classic known as Defender. Now, this is a classic arcade shooter now. When it actually launched, people didn't think it would catch on. People thought it was too complicated. And in fact, in one of its first public showings, uh, many people just walked right past it because it had too many buttons. How many buttons do you are, are you thinking here? Well, it had an up and a down arrow. It had a forwards button. It had a shoot button. It had a bomb and hyperspace button. And it had a reverse button. Um, actually, once you list it all out, I guess it does kind of sound like a lot. But like realistically, think of Mario. He has a left and right and up and down button, run and jump button. Um, I guess that's it. I guess maybe it's more complicated. I don't know. Um, it is It is kind of ridiculous to think of uh, a game that has like six or seven buttons being considered too complicated for video game audiences to understand. It kind of reminds me of back when people said Donkey Kong, you know, wouldn't catch on because it was too complicated. Or even before that, when people said video games themselves were nothing but a fad. Yes, somebody in the 70s or 80s um, said that. I forget exactly who. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and hop into Defender here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a coin here and start the gameplay. So here we are as the uh, defender. Now our goal is to go around and defend these little dudes. Yes, these guys are, uh, are, are astronauts. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, wait, wait, reverse. Oh, I just, oh, I think I killed two or three of my own guys. Okay, well, you know, they said defend them or kill them. I, I'm, I'm going to say that, those, that, that my orders from the generals were literally defend them at any cost. If you have to murder those astronauts, oh, we got killed. If you have to murder the astronauts, uh, uh, you know, um, to prevent them from being abducted, go for it. So basically, we have a license to kill. That's my claim to fame here. That's what I'm going to tell the general. But as you see, your little ship here shooting these laser beams which actually look tremendous for a 1980s video game i was expecting just a straight line but it's like a jaggedy line with texture to it and like multicolors. oh god and they killed me again this game by the way is known for being super super hard but anyway you have thrust you have shoot <laughs> damn it um you have a reverse key that i was using uh there when i shot my own guys um, I did it kind of quickly, so let's go ahead and hop in here. So you can reverse either way. This was a big deal back in the day, guys. Defender here was one of the first games to ever feature side-scrolling. And it is, in fact, the game that, uh, that popularized the idea of side-scrolling. Before that, video games were essentially a one-screen affair. Like, think of, you know, Pong, Asteroids, Space Invaders. Literally, those games take place entirely on a single screen. Oh, no, he captured one of my dudes. Like, I captured one of my dudes. Oh, no. Look, there's there's dudes floating around in pods. These are spacemen who have been abducted. Um, basically, I fail them, and then they turn against you as evil mutants. Mutant, evil muto scum. We must kill all the evil mutants, guys. So don't let don't let your astronauts get uh, abducted in real life, or they will turn into mutants. But, yeah, the idea of side-scrolling, I mean, like... Where would we be without side-scrolling? We would have nothing. We wouldn't have Mario Brothers. Like, look, even Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was like, you know, a landmark game in and of its own right. But it didn't have no side-scrolling screens. It was all one screen, you know, like Burger Time was one screen. Um, every, everything was one screen until somebody said, you know what? What if action could take place um, off of the screen and we could scroll the screen as like a viewpoint looking in and people went oh and uh and yeah and so the side scrolling fast paced action in defender here is one of the reasons that it's now considered one of the most important games of the golden age of, of video games um it is one of the highest grossing games uh of the golden age it, it, it grossed a billion dollars and like even today for a video game to gross a billion dollars we're doing terrible at this by the way even today for a video game to to gross a billion dollars that's nothing to scoff at hell most films don't gross a billion dollars uh most like marvel or actually not most marvel films most marvel films do gross a billion dollars but most you know like most film studios would kill to have billion dollar film franchises this video game did it before before earning a billion dollars was cool it's like the hipster of, of video games 
It uh, did it before it's cool. It even uh, apparently has a 2004 novelization. Yes, if if you have fond, fond memories of playing Defender in the arcades and you think, gee, the only thing that would make this better is like a complicated backstory and, and getting to read about uh, the exploits in novelization format. Well, I have news for you. Apparently, apparently this thing actually exists. It's called Hyperswarm. You can go Google it and find it online. But there is a legit novelization of this game. Which, I don't know, I mean, like, how do you novelize this? I mean, I guess it could be kind of anything. Like, it's, it's almost like a blank slate. Like, of course you could novelize it. It's aliens attacking Earth for whatever reason you want. And somebody who has to save them. Oh, we totally saved that guy. We He was being pulled up into space, and we shot him loose. Look, we'll do it to this guy, too. And he just falls like a thousand feet, and he's like, thanks. Fall damage does not hurt me. This planet has fall damage turned off. I'm good. Maybe the novelization explains it a bit more. Because I'll admit I'm lost. I'll admit I'm just kind of like flying by seeing my fans. Now, we haven't used the other... Okay, I, I got distracted. I was talking about buttons. And I started talking about how this is like a billion dollar game franchise. Um, oh, we just passed the level. And abruptly, the level ends. That's how chapter one ends in the novelization. Whoa, that, that thing spawned right on my dude. Whoa! Whoa, what are those things? I killed a thing and it spawned multiple things. That's not fair. That's that's not fair, guys. Um, okay, we also have a bomb button. Kaboom! Just blows up everything on the screen. Kaboom! Oh, but it, it didn't destroy the bullet, so the bullet still got me. And we have a hyperspace button. So if you're like, you know what the hell with this? I'm out of here. You just press that and you teleport somewhere else randomly on the map. Oh, we saved that guy by... We went to ramming speed there. Um, and we, we saved that guy by going into a collision course with the enemy there. Now, Defender here has a very interesting development history. It was the first real arcade game that Williams Incorporated actually developed. Before this, their, their, the only video game they had ever developed, ever, was a Pong clone. Whoa, oh, oh, look, shoot the reverse button. Oh man, I, I'm, I'm like losing track of the buttons here. Whoa, we did amazing on that level though. Um, anyway, Williams, Williams Incorporated here, you know, I guess they went from like, um, whoa, forget that. I, I, I've seen that trick before. I kill you and you turn into little red dots to kill me. Um, but Williams, Williams Incorporated, they had only made like Pong clones and they decided, you know what, let's go ahead and try our hand at making uh, their own game. So in their, in their brilliant wisdom, they, they assembled a, a design team and the design team's first instinct was, well, let's just make a Space Invaders clone. So they actually programmed it, and it didn't really turn out as enjoyable as they wanted it. So they were like, all right, you know what, guys? We got to get serious here. Let's make an Asteroids clone. So they literally made that, too. They made both a Space Invaders and an Asteroids clone, and they, they realized that neither of those were... Oh, I picked up the dude. Oh, I picked up the dude. Oh, and I dropped him. Oh, that's, that's service with a smile. Not only did I save you from aliens, I didn't let you just fall out of low orbit. I actually picked you up. I'm a good guy like that, in case you don't know. Um, but anyway, eventually I guess they decided, you know what? Okay, we've tried cloning Space Invaders, we've tried cloning Asteroids. Let's try something radically different and just make our own game. And it's interesting because, in a weird way, this game actually is kind of like an evolution of Space Invaders plus Asteroids. So it kind of has the, like, defend the world from aliens aspect of space invaders and the aliens are coming down from above but then it has sort of a, a side scrolling kind of moving action that that was a little you know a little more prevalent in something like asteroids um and you mix that all together you add some scroll some side scrolling screen which was the true innovation of this game and yeah you end up with this so you know what hey they they they, they got off to a weird start by trying to just uh, clone existing successful games but eventually they realized that there's there's much more opportunity in creating creating for yourself that rather than just copying greatness and then they made greatness so you know um, you got to give it to Williams uh, Incorporated and the uh, developer of this game whose name I'm totally blanking on but it's a well-known guy well-known guy from the Golden Age anyway we've qualified for the Defender Hall of Fame I don't know how that happened select the initials with the up and down stick and press fire to enter your initials don't mind if I do I want to be part of oh Damn it, is there a back key? Is there a back key? Damn it, there is not a back key, is there? Okay, we are, j yeah, j yeah, that, that's us. The A is silent, it's a silent A. It's so silent you don't even write it down. 
Um, but that's okay. Hey, we actually made the top scoreboard. Um, so let's go ahead and give this like one more shot. And then what I thought would be fun is, a fun thing to do is to hop over onto the um, Atari 2600 and actually see what the home version of this game uh, would actually look like. Because in the arcades, I mean, this is this was like a pretty big deal for, again, 1980. It had so many buttons. They made a home Atari version of this. The Atari 2600 only has a single button. And when I read that this game, which was considered to be possibly a failure when it came out because it had too many buttons, was ported to the Atari 2600, it made me wonder, like, how did they do that? How, how was that possible? There we go. We dropped him on a mountain. Good luck getting down, buddy. No! Oh, not only did I kill the alien, I killed the astronaut, too. It's like, well, if I can't have him, nobody can. Oh, oh, God. Man, the reversing in this game is actually pretty tricky. You would think you just press left or right on the joystick to go left or right, but it doesn't work that way. There's a reverse button. So whenever I need to, like, rapidly turn around, it's actually pretty tricky. Damn it. I should have bombed. Should have bombed. I panicked, guys. Ah! Okay, let's, let's, let's try... Let's try one more time here. One more time here. We, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't just give up on our little astronaut compadres that quickly, guys. Um, another interesting little bit of trivia for this game, by the way. Um, it was titled after a 1960s lawyer cop drama TV show. Um, they, when they actually developed this game, they thought it had a lot of violence. And, oh god. They figured one way to sort of justify the violence is if you weren't sort of the aggressor but instead you were the defender hence the name defender um and i don't know how that tie i don't know how they were like watching some like cop show from the 60s and they were like hey th this this matches well with space i think uh, the title really f suits uh suits space combat oh we we were like outrunning that bullet there that was a that was a race for our life oh god we let too many of the uh Astronauts get abducted. It's kind of like fighting the Borg. Like these are all little acutuses. They, they've they've taken our best and turned them against us. Oh no! Picard got me. I was lacutied. All right. Well, we've bounced around here in the arcade. Now I probably spent just in talking to you guys like two or three dollars in quarters. Like that's how fast money would drop in the arcade. You remember back in the day, you go in the arcade for like ten bucks. You come out half an hour later and be like, my mom's gonna kill me. That was all my laundry money. Um, but anyway, okay, we had a shot at it in the arcade. Oh, in the demo here, they're even showing us rescuing a civilian. Let's see what would happen if for Christmas your parents were to actually go out and buy you an Atari 2600 and give you the home console version. Let's see what that version was like. All right, so here is the home console version of Defender released in the Atari 2600. This actually did come out on a number of other systems, like the Atari 8-bit, the Atari 5200, which uh, one day I will play the Atari 5200, um, but uh, not today. Today we're going for the much more common Defender on the Atari 2600. Now, it looks like we've shifted from uh, the sort of mountainous landscape that we got in the arcade to pretty much an urban environment, but I think those are supposed to be mountains. It's just, you know, the when, when you're playing things on Atari... You kind of have to use your imagination here. So let's go ahead and hop into this. We got the awesome Atari load sound effect. Um, so I guess that's an alien. Now my ship here <laughs> totally disappears whenever you shoot, which is really interesting. Now, uh, right goes right, left goes left. I actually consider that a big improvement over the arcade. I mean, it takes away a whole button. So you simplify the game a fair amount. Oh, and we just got killed. Um, it is actually a lot harder to see where it is that you're going. Um, and damned if I... Okay, technically we do have bombs. I have no idea how... How would you initiate a bomb? Do I hold the button, maybe? How would you initiate a bomb when you only have one button? Up and down wouldn't do it. Left and right. You hold the button? Doesn't do anything. Okay, so, so I'm not entirely sure how to use the bomb. That's okay. We didn't really use the bomb in the arcade version anyway. I feel like the bomb is kind of like cheaping out. The bomb is like you, you, you've accepted that you're not good at the game and you got to phone it in. We're, we're not at that level, guys. We're good at the game. We just, we're just not actually doing very well. But we are actually technically good at the game, I contend. And so we don't need no stinking bombs. That's, that's just, that's just, you know, that's just bombs are for losers. 
Oh, we saved a civilian there. I'm actually really glad that I played the arcade version before I loaded up the Atari 2600 version here, because you not only have to use a lot of imagination for the for the train, but you have to use a lot of imagination for what the hell is going on in the game, too. It's just a bunch of shapes that are blinking and flying around the screen, and some are falling towards the ground, and uh, I would never have known. I would never have known that that ship right now is capturing a civilian, and I just saved him. I would have been like, what the hell? He dropped a, a glowing energy cube. Was that supposed to happen, or was that like, did I mess up? Oh man, we're doing so much better in this. We're already on level two. Funny thing about the arcade game, actually, is that they only ever designed five levels for the game. Um, and they figured, actually, that was probably enough, because no one in the design team could get past level three. <laughs> so they were like, well, level three is probably as many levels as we need for this game. But let's go ahead and just design two more, just in case. And I don't think anyone anticipated, like, that eventually, you know, things like... You'd have people who, like, are breaking, like, Donkey Kong and Pac-Man by getting to, like, level 255, so that the systems totally run out of memory or whatever, you know, whatever kill screen exists in a video game. I don't think developers understood that one day people would be so obsessed that that is as far as they would go. We just totally died, by the way. We died on level two. We, we, we couldn't make it any farther. But I, I, I want to get to level three at least, because then I know I'll be as good as developers. Although that was in the arcade version. I'm sure the, the home console version here feels a little easier. Although it is hard. I mean, all all old all old games are really hard, so this game feels hard. We should mix up the direction that we go, though. I mean, now that we can actually hold left to go left and right to go right, we need to take advantage of this and and, and mix up the directions here. Um, but yeah, I don't think the developers ever expected people to be like you know hitting kill screens and stuff. So they made five levels and then just made it repeat after that if you could beat level five. And I'm sure they thought, no one's ever going to beat level 5. Who would play Defender so much in the arcades that they could beat past level 5? Even even the developer of the game, the guy who invented it, couldn't do it. Uh, but lo and behold, of course, of course, of course people can do that now. Um, it's just what people do. It, it's such an interesting shift in, like, design philosophies of video games. Like... Back in the day, it's like you would design a game. Most of your energy would go towards figuring out sort of a, a fun little bit of gameplay that you could put into like a level that would maybe take a minute to beat. And you would make it really hard and you would make like maybe three levels, you know, and like that's it. So it's like, what did you do for most of the time when you were developing that game? You were probably spending, whoa, why are all these guys just appearing on the screen? What the hell is happening here? But anyway, you're probably spending most of your development time, like, um, you know, working on the mechanics of the game, like working on the technology that, that would allow you to show all the sprites that you want to and the particle effects that would show awesome explosions and, and this and that. But it's like nowadays, I feel like that stuff is actually like just a given. It's like super easy to do, actually. Like nobody's spending spending a ton of effort, like, um, you know, reinventing the wheel when it comes to... Uh, when it, when it comes to, um, like, the technology behind games. Um, and, like, as a case in point, like, many developers just use existing game libraries because we've reached a point where, like, the technology behind games is not something that is hard to come by. And so what makes a great game now is developing great levels, great story, great characters, great control schemes, you know, new things people haven't seen before. Um, what happened? My screen just blew up. And then I died. What the hell was that? What, what, what just happened? I, I don't know, but there's a lot of aliens right now. This does not bode well for me. I'm just shooting everything and hoping to God I survive. I'm doing okay, though. I feel like I, I, feel like I was built for the Atari 2600. The arcades, not so much. But here we go. Let's kill these things. And these things. Oh, there's a guy right on top of me. Oh, he's right on top of me. Oh, there's, they're all over the place. Oh, is this how I die? Is this how I die? Ah, run, flee, flee, continue to flee. You just got to, like, kill them before they get above you because then it's, like, deadly. Oh, God. And you guys probably don't even really know where I am on the screen. I don't even know half the time. Holy crap, we made it to level four. We're bossing out on this, man. Somebody call the directors, the documentarians of King of Kong, because I got a I got a new film for them. It's called Defending Honor. The the Jay the Gaming Guy story. Jay the Gaming Guy! <laughs> that's not even my name, it's Gaming Jay. Um, and that's not even my full that's not my birth certificate name, just in case you were wondering. There's more to it than that. My parents did not call me uh, it's not I'm not legally gaming Jay. 
Although, I can't tell if that'd be awesome or just humiliating. Yeah, we got him. Man, we're, we're crushing it. Okay, okay, and now we're back to level one. So even in the Atari 2600 game, they're like, well, we do have an opportunity here to add some more levels, but uh, I'm already in my pajamas. Well, let's just ship it. And that's that's the story of uh, why there's only five levels, even in the home console version of Defender. There must be other versions where there's more. I mean, you know, I, I make fun, but um, again, I know that this game was super influential, and uh, yeah, it, the whole the whole concept of side scrolling, huge deal back in the day. Um, I remember playing a lot of Atari 2600 games when I was a kid at like my babysitter's house after school. They like had it in their basement, and we would just like put cartridges in as kids and, and play it. Um, I don't remember a lot of games scrolling. I remember Pitfall scrolled, and that was like a big deal, but Pitfall, of course, came after Defender. Um, it did not innovate the idea. Oh, what hit me? A snowflake! A snowflake killed me! Oh, jeez. Like another snowflake coming. Oh, 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 ah, we slid backwards into it, into an enemy ship. Okay. I, I feel like we have infinite lives, though, at the moment. Like, our, our life counter is not counting down. I've been, I started to play, like, pretty sloppily, but my life counter is still doing pretty pretty well here. Um, considering we've seen all five levels, I'm kind of tempted to die and see what other modes of gameplay there are in this game. So, let's actually give that a real quick shot here. Okay, so if you press one of these switches on the Atari, the screen changes into all these funky colors. So the Atari 2600 had a whole bunch of switches along the top of it. And if you flick them, things would happen. Like the screen is like changing color and it's like counting up numbers now. I don't know if this actually does anything to the gameplay. I mean, of course it must do something. Okay, like, like I, can't, I can't identify whether anything is actually different here. Maybe I have like fewer lives or something. Okay, now we're in like a yellow world. But then it keeps resetting back. I I I don't entire I don't pretend to understand the Atari 2600 guys. Oh, I feel like I'm moving really slow up and down right now. Like I'm really lagging. I must have done something here. Hold on. Let's try 192. That should be a thing. Oh, now there's no buildings. Oh, and I I can't seem to move very easily. Okay, I've made myself very sluggish. I don't know. Um, that's one thing about the Atari 2600. It had a whole bunch of random switches along the top of it, and flicking them around did stuff. Now we're back to 1-1. One, one. Is this is this what we want? Why am I super slow right now? Uh, I must have flicked a, a, a switch that I did not want to flick. But yeah, it had a bunch of random switches along the top, and like you could press them, and like nobody ever knew what they did. Like even my dad, who like would buy these games and read the instructions and stuff, I could be like, Dad, what do these switches do for Pitfall? And be like, you know, to hell if I know. Like, just flick them and see what happens. Like, like nobody ever knew. It was, it was such like a random system, but it was, it was, it's totally like kind of a funny thing about the Atari 2600. And like anyone who ever owned one, like totally knows the experience of like, well, I have a game and it probably has like eight different modes. I'm just going to try flicking them and see what happens. And a lot of the modes were like your character would just be invisible or like some other like sort of like minor random difference. So it's like my guy seems to have trouble moving up and down. That's that's what that's what the, the difficulty mode is is changed. It'd be like if there were difficulty modes in like you know Halo or Mario, where it's like you don't jump as high or you take more damage or mushrooms do nothing. Like they're kind of like like very early like little game genie codes. Only not in that they help you, but in that they hurt you. Anyway, I've had some fun here messing around with Defender. I feel like uh, I've got I've gotten a good sense of uh, you know what this game was like in the arcades and at home. And like really, you know, back in the day, like like video games were were usually played in a much shorter session. Like nowadays, you sit down to play a video game, and it could be like a two, three, four, five, eight hour affair. But you know, back in the day, video games existed in like thirty second chunks of our lives. You know, and you would, like, play a video game. If you lasted for 10 minutes, you were a good player. Nowadays, like, 10 minutes is sometimes, like, the opening cinematic to a video game. So, yeah, you know, I, I just messed around with these games a little bit. But, I mean, we've pretty much seen everything there is. You know, it's not like there's a hidden boss or something I didn't fight. So, what can we say about Defender in the end? Well, I think Defender 
is one of those games that stands as a tr- as like a very innovative game for its time. You know, and like all true innovations, people didn't think it would work. Um, but then the genius of it uh, sort of came out over time. So side-scrolling, it seems so trivial to us today, guys. But it is something that had to be invented. And before you've ever seen it, you know, you, you would play a whole bunch of video games that all take place on a single screen. You think, this is just what video games are. But then somebody goes and says, like, why? And they literally think outside the box, and they say, let's have that box scroll. Like, minds are blown. So, yeah, I think this game, sort of for historical reasons... Um, has uh, got a lot going for it. In terms of actual gameplay, I think that the arcade version was decent, but I don't like that having to press a button to reverse. I feel like it's kind of um, unnatural. I wish they had just had a joystick. I feel like the Atari 2600 actually has better controls, but because it only has one button, and I don't really know what... It's probably a switch on the Atari to use the bombs, but I didn't have the patience to sort of figure it out. But it wasn't really even that essential. I mean, we made it to, like, level 5 without the bombs. So, again, bombs bombs are a crutch, guys. Don't use them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things that, like... Uh, I, I, the control scheme is decent enough. I could see people going back to play it sort of for nostalgia's sake, um, especially people who are super into arcade games, or if you are into arcade games and you've never tried this before, you might want to check it out. But in terms of this just being like a general, like, whoa, like, you got to go back and play Defender, I don't think it holds up as well. You know, there are other, like, classic arcade games, you know, like like Pac-Man, like Pac-Man or Ms. Pac-Man, that, like, they're legitimately actually still a bit fun, and, and they're, they're very simple in controls. Um, this one, I've just found it to be like, yeah, like, it's it's a decent shooter, but um, I think people have taken the innovations that it created, and they've built um, sort of much better games over the years. But that's just my opinion, guys. What do you think of Defender here? Do you think I'm being too hard on Defender, or do you kind of agree with my assessment? Do you have any fond memories of playing Defender, either in the arcades or at home? If so, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, no matter what you think of uh, the game, hopefully you've enjoyed hanging out with me. If you have, slap that subscribe button. Go ahead and like the video and share it with your friends and family. Um, And I will be back in a couple days, guys. So until then, my friends, remember to fend off alien invasions with all your might and take care of yourselves. Peace. Welcome to the land of yellow skies. Now they're red, flying through the skies, fighting aliens and shooting everything that doesn't look good. Now the sky is orange and aliens are still here. Gonna kill them all. Gonna kill them all. Gonna save all the humans. The sky is now yellow. What the hell's going on with the sky?